All right, well, we are on the air. Um, I know we have some more people joining, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, everybody, welcome to Code Mentors Office Hours for today. Uh, my name is Mark, um, and today we are joined um, by Frederick Harper. Uh, we're really excited about this session. It's going to be a little less technically focused and more about branding ourselves as developers. Um, so in terms of format, I'm going to go ahead and, and introduce uh, Frederick, and he's going to give us uh, a presentation um, on, on branding for developers, and then we're are going to have a, a Q&A session in the latter half. Um, so go ahead and add any questions you have either to the Q&A app in Hangouts or in the group chat. I'll sort of be moderating both. And if you wouldn't mind, as people join, just uh, muting yourself. Um, so Frederick Harper is a head of developer relations at Mashape, um, which is a marketplace for APIs. Uh, he's the founder of GeekFest in Montreal and is a former tech evangelist at both Mozilla and Microsoft. He's also now a published author of the book Success in Programming, How to Gain Recognition, Power, and Influence Through Personal Branding. He's joining us today from Montreal to discuss how programmers can become more in demand through branding. Uh, so with that, I'll, uh, I'll kick it over to, to Frederick. Awesome. Thanks, thanks for the introduction, and thanks for uh, being here. So uh, I'm really happy to uh, talk about one of the topics that I really like, one of the topics that I want to share more with people, uh, really about personal branding for developers. So let me share my screen. I'm going to do the first half uh, of the office hour. It's going to be more about me talking about personal branding, introducing what it is exactly, why it makes sense for us, and how has developers or maybe designers join us, how we can use personal branding to reach the next level in her career. So uh, as Mark uh, said before, I'm the head of developer relation at Mashape. So my, my role is to work with developers and really help developer being successful uh, using API, being successful delivering quality application. So today it's a, it's a small introduction. I will talk for less than 30 minutes because I really want to uh, maximize the time we have for Q&A. So if you have any question after, uh, all my knowledge about personal branding is basically, it's based on my own experience. So I did not study about personal branding or all those things. It's really about my career path. And from the beginning when I was a developer to today where I'm leading a team of evangelists at Mashape. So I don't really want you to answer those questions because I think everybody's mute, but if you look at that logo, can you recognize that brand? So this logo is not the usual logo of that company, so of course it's Pepsi. Even if you don't drink uh, soft drink, you will recognize that brand because it's really well known. So there is no tagline, there is no title, it's just the same logo that we're used to, but only like with round. And you can do the same for this one. This logo, still using a lot of round circle to create the logo, so it's not the exact logo of that company. But even if you're not, uh, sorry, even if you're not a biking fan, uh, even if you don't do biking, you will recognize that logo. It's Harley Davidson because they have a strong brand, because this is a synonym of quality. Because when we think about biking. It's really one of the uh, companies that comes to mind. So what is personal branding? It's basically the same. So it's, not, it's less about comparing yourself to logos or tagline, but it's being able to say that, hey, when we think about soft drink, most of the time we're going to think about Coke, we're going to think about Pepsi. Those are really strong brands when it comes to soft drink. When we think about biking, we're going to think about Harley Davidson. Maybe we're going to think about other companies like BMW or any other bike company. But most of the time, Harley Davidson will come to mind. So personal branding, it's basically trying to do the same thing with yourself. When I think about the person about web standard, I think about Jeffrey Zellman. When I think about HTML5, when I think about... Uh, a developer that have really great CSS skills and most of the time people think that uh, she's a designer. We think about Leah Veru. So there's some names out there that comes up. So personal branding is really trying to associate yourself 
to something specific, to passion, to expertise you have, to really something that's going to be part of your brand. So I really like what Paul Irish uh, from Google, you may know Paul Irish, is a, a advocate, a technical evangelist at Google, really trying to talk about web and Chrome. And what he said is personal branding is the heart of consistent, consistently presenting online and offline the essence of how you stand out of the crowd. And it's really what personal branding is. It's trying to be consistent, trying to work on that specific things that is really part of you and this is how people see you. So it's really about you. It's about yourself. It's about who you are. And no matter who you are, you can be, that can be good, that can be bad. Uh, you have like good habits, you have maybe bad habits that people know, but it's part of you. So you don't, you don't need to hide those things. It's really about who you are, no matter who you are. It's about who you want to be. So it's not about lying about, hey, I want to be an astronaut in this uh, legal image. It's, it's really not about lying to people, but you probably want to change a little bit. You probably want to improve some part of uh, your life, some part of your career. So you fix some goals and you go toward those goals to be a better person, to be a better developer. It's also about how you want to be seen. Because no matter what you think, no matter if you care about what people think about you, at the end of the day, it means a lot. Uh, sometimes it's less about really who you are than how people see you. You can be seen as the best uh, Python developer out there, but you're just beginning to do Pythons, but you did a really great talk at work, and you're better than other people. But of course, maybe there's people that are better than you. But people see you as the expert in your crowd, at a company, in your city. So it's really about how people see you. It's about what you know. It's about your knowledge. But it's also about what you don't know. It's about what you're doing. Are you organizing an event? Are you always there to help people? Are you the person who don't talk to others, who always do his own things, or is not really social? So it's really part of what you do uh, is really part of your branding. But also what you did, we uh, were talking in the introduction about uh, Geek Fest Montreal. So it was a, a Geek Festival that I created in Montreal. I'm not organizing that festival anymore, but I'm still the one who started, who created the first version. So I did the, the first two editions, and it's part of me. Even if it's not, I'm not organizing that event anymore, it's part of me, it's part of what I did. And it's part of my brand. So people say, oh, Fred, we know Fred is a geek because it started the, that festival. So that may or may not be true. I may not be the, the biggest geek out there, but because I did something in the past, it's associated to me. And it's about your tribe. And what I mean by your tribe is people that you know, your friends, colleagues, acquaintance, people that you met at conferences, people that you work with or you met at work, but it's also about who knows you. The people that know you that you may not know, maybe they heard about you because you write a great blog post, maybe they're following you on Twitter, but you never met those person uh, face to face. So it's really about your tribe also, and tribe's going to be really, really important. So I'm going to come back on this letter. And it's about what you like and what you doesn't like. Be because today it's so easy to share uh, what you like and uh, even easier to share what you don't like on social media. It's easy to tweet about, oh my god, that last version of that software that I really like pissed me off. So it's part of you, it's, power, it's part of how people see you. So it's really about everything that define you. But it's kind of high level stuff. It's, it's kind of a little bit obvious, but at the same time it's not that obvious. So why should you care about personal branding? And my first question would be like, is personal branding really important? If you're at the, the, this office hour today, it's probably because either you're curious, uh, maybe you think it's important, maybe you think that, oh my God, this thing is bullshit, it's, it's like it's trying to be that rock star, it doesn't make sense, but I want to be sure that I'm going to be able to tell Fred that it doesn't make sense to think about personal branding. I don't want to be like that super rock star, I don't want to be like super popular, but there is other reason. But I would say that personal branding, it's not important. It's critical. We're living in a world right now where it's easier to 
get noticed, where it's easier to create connection. It's easier to reach the next level. But you need to take the control of that brand. You need to be the honor of your career path. You need to be the honor of what's going to be your next goal. So it's not about being that rock star. Or maybe it is. Maybe it's about being well known everywhere in the world. Maybe it's about having some uh, more power. Or maybe there is some different reason it's more local. So it's not always about I want to be that super international presenter that's going to speak all across the world. Maybe it's your goal, but it doesn't have to be this. And it's really for everyone. So now I'm doing a talk for developers because I'm a developer. I have a technical background. Uh, I wrote a book for developers, but it's also for everyone. Remember when you go to your uh, preferred restaurant and you know the waiter or the waitress, and you know that this waitress or this waiter, they're really good because they remembered your name, they're always right when you order something, and it's part of their brand. So it's not just for a developer, but I think that developers, we have really the power to take the personal branding and take it to the next level. So why I came in, why, why I came with personal branding, it's because it's because of my own story. I was a developer, I started more than 10 years ago. I was creating software, mobile, web software, and I like to create software. But I'm a social person. I really like to talk to people. I like to share my passion. And when I discovered that kind of weird role that is technical evangelist, I said, OK, I want to do this. But I didn't have all the skills. I didn't have everything I needed to do this. So I started to create my personal brand and work on my brand. And now, from developer, I was, I was not the best developer. I was not the shittiest one. I was like an average developer. I think I was good at what I was, at what I was doing, but not the best out there. But I went from developer to technical evangelist. I worked at Microsoft, the senior technical evangelist at Mozilla. And now I moved to Meshape, a startup in San Francisco, and I'm leading the evangelist team. I'm building that evangelist framework. And for me, it's amazing because I went from one, one job to another job that is quite different, even if it's the same field, even if it's about technical stuff, it's still quite different. And I was able to do this because of my brand. So there is a lot of great things that happen in my life because of my brand. And you may not know me before that presentation. So I'm not saying that I'm like super well known. I'm just more known than I was before. I have a bigger network than I had before. I, had, uh, I have a better job. Uh, I don't care about Mondays anymore. I wake up on Monday. And I really like what I'm doing. And for me, it was one of my goals. I wanted to be an evangelist. And I wanted to wake up on Monday and didn't care about the fact that I was working. Because for me, work and having fun, the line is really fuzzy. It's really thin. So why you should care about personal branding? I have a bad news for you. You are not indispensable. Tomorrow, you can lose your job. It's sad, but it's part of the reality. There is no employment security anymore. Uh, it happened to me. I thought that the company was going well, and the day after I had a discussion with the boss, and the boss told me, Fred, sorry, you still have two weeks, but after that, we need to lay you off. I said, what? What happened? Like, I need a job. I need to pay my bills. I need to. So you're not indispensable. So you need to make yourself the more indispensable possible by building that brand. Maybe there is new opportunities ahead for you. Maybe there is a new job you want to have. Maybe there's a conflict or kind of completely different job you want to do, like I did from developer to evangelist. Maybe you want to change department. Maybe you want to go work to that company that you really like and you didn't have the chance yet to like get a job there. So there is some new opportunities that you may have to uh, you may have in the future. So by building that brand, that's going to be easier for you to reach that next opportunity. Maybe you want a better paycheck. I would say that I don't know a lot of people that say, I don't want more money in my account. That may not be your only goal. But maybe you want to get another job, another type of job that will give you a better paycheck. Maybe just changing to another company will get you a better paycheck. And maybe it's what you want because you want to travel more, because you want to maybe take more vacation, or maybe you just want to buy that new cool toy that you cannot buy right now. So that may be one of your goals. 
Maybe it's about recognition. And this is not a bad thing. You want people to recognize you, to say that, hey, this guy, this girl, really good Ruby developer. Or, oh, no, this person, I know, I know him. And he's always there to help you when you need. Like, he's always mentoring at hackathon session. You really know his things. You really know that programming language. And it's great. It's not, it's not a bad thing to want recognition. And that could be one of the reasons why you want to work on your personal brand. And you deserve to be successful. And no matter what is the definition of successful for you, as I said, it can be a better paycheck, it can be a different job. Maybe you're waking up on a Monday and you don't like what you do. There are so many people that I talk to that just don't like their job, but they don't change. They don't go to another job. And it's not always easy, let's be honest. But the more you're going to have a strong brand, the easiest it's going to be to find a new job. As an example, and I'm not better than anyone else, but when I decided to leave Microsoft, I wrote a blog post and said, okay, I'm done. I need a new challenge. I love my job without knowing where I'm going to go next. And I got some offers because I had a great network, because I had that brand. I did the same thing for Mozilla, and I get a really awesome job also. So you have the possibility to do those kind of things that you may not have when you don't have that brand, when you don't care about that personal brand. And the thing you need to keep in mind, I really like that image of Willem. <laughs> the thing you need to keep in mind is that whether you know it or not, you already have a personal brand. And the thing is that you need to manage, you need to take the ownership of that brand. Maybe it's a good one, maybe it's not a good brand. Maybe when people talk to you at work, they say, oh yeah, yeah, this developer, he never understand what I want him to do, uh, he never like when we ask him some requests, uh, he's not a good person that I want to work with. And maybe it's not true, maybe you have your own reason, maybe like you're really hard focused on your work and you don't like when people disrupt this, uh, maybe you have another better brand and people see you as I said before you're like that I don't know that Java developer but you did Java once five years ago but people still remember this and they think of you just about Java programming language when maybe you're doing HTML CSS and JavaScript for the last seven years so you already have a brand people already define you people judge you and it's sad though people will always put labels, they will always put stickers on you, they will put you in a box, but you need to be the owner of that box. So you already have a personal brand right now. The next step is to take the ownership of that brand. So how can you do this? Let's go to things that is a little more concrete. First, you need to define your goal. Why do you want to work on that brand? Because if you have no end goal, I think there is no reason for you to work on that brand and to take the ownership of that brand. What is your goal? I was saying before, maybe a better paycheck, a better job, uh, having more chances to choose amazing project, uh, start your own company, be a freelancer. So there is many reasons. You need to define your goal. But you need to have something that you're going to be able to realize in a specific amount of time. After this, you need to define your brand. How do you want people to see you? How do you want people to think about you? What's going to be the thing that's going to make you unique? And it's kind of tricky because I can be known as the best JavaScript developer out there or one of the good JavaScript developers out there. But there is a lot more JavaScript developers and a lot more good or, or even better developer than me. So you always need to find like that kind of secret sauce that's going to make you unique. And it's not always easy, but it's a, it's a work in progress. You're never done with your personal brand. It's something that you're going to always work with, you're going to always work on, you're going to adapt, you're going to change, depending on your experience, depending on your new goals, depending on how you think. So you need to define your brand. It's about who you are. As I said before, uh, never lie to yourself, never lie to people, because that's going to hurt more than anything else. It's about... Who do you want to be also? I told you, don't lie to people, but maybe there is something you want to improve. As an example, when I was looking to go from developer to an evangelist, 
part of the evangelist work is to do public speaking. And I've, I never did any public speaking. I said, okay, I need to get some experience about it. So I said, I want to be a public speaker. So I tried to find a conference, a user group where I was able to speak. And after my first talk, I changed my Twitter bio and I said, I'm a public speaker. And at the end, it was true because I did one talk. I was not the, like the super huge public speaker that did like 100 talks or 200 talks or going to all those like high profile conferences. It was a small conference in Montreal, but still, I did a talk in front of people. And that was more than any other people that never speak in front of people. So I was a public speaker. So it was part of my brand. It was part of who I wanted to be. Now I can say, now I can say with a lot more confidence that I am a public speaker because I'm doing a talk every week, every two weeks. Be authentic. Don't be afraid to show your true color. Don't be afraid to show your true self because if you don't do it, uh, I see many accounts, and I think it's great. I see many accounts that are really like business driven, and I think it's good. But on my side, I always like to follow people that I feel more human that have like good things, bad things, that are honest with people. And for me, this is how you're going to create relationship. How do you want people to define you? Again, my example of public speaking was a great one. Or when I started to write the book, the book was not published yet. But I, was, I, I put on my uh, Twitter and any other bio that I was an author because I was writing a book. I wanted people to define me as a noter at that time because I think, oh, that's going to be great. That's going to make some promotion for the book. But even if my book was not published, I was writing a book. So it was true. I was a noter. So it's, it's how I wanted people to define me. So that was still high-level stuff. Let's go with more concrete example for developers. And you may already do those kind of things, but you may, you may not think that they are part of your brand or that they can have a positive uh, effect on your brand. So first, this is my mantra, do a big shit. Sorry about the S word, but it's really always try to do amazing things and do what you love. So your brand should be around something you like. You like developing software, go for it. You're an API fan, go for it. You like mobile development, go for it. Uh, it's a, it could be something else outside of uh, the development world, but it should be around something you love. Because if you don't like to do something, you just take it because that can help you to be successful, that can help you to be well-known, that's not going to work. So you always need to go around a passion and make it hard. I, I really like, I don't know if you know Seth Godin. Uh, it's more on the marketing side of thing. He wrote a lot of, big, uh, a lot of book uh, about marketing. But what I really like from Seth that he's always telling people, telling his reader, that it should make hard, with a capital A in that case. So always, it's always coming back, do something great, do something good, and you're going to see the, the effect, the return on investment if you do something of quality. And make your own rules. Make your own rules. Don't be afraid to fight the status quo. But there is a secret sauce. There's a secret ingredient to really make it happen. And it's the visibility. You can be, you can have like the best product out there. You can be the best developer with the specific technology. You can have the biggest expertise on the web center or whatever. If you do all of this in your garage and nobody see you, sorry, that's not going to work. You're not going to have a personal brand. And visibility is crucial. So it's not about being always like, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at what I did. Look at me and post a picture of you and video of you and just like you're going to annoy people. But it's about getting visibility. And there is a lot of ways for you to do this. First, you need to have an online presence. Uh, if you're not on Google, you just don't exist. You're dead. It's sad, but we're living in a world that if I can't find you in search engine, you're not existing. When I'm hiring people, Maybe I feel like a stalker when I do this, but when I'm hiring people, I go on Google and I search for those people to get some information. Do they have a blog? Do they have a website? Oh, what are they sharing on Twitter or Facebook? And instead about stalking people, I don't care that much about their personal life, but I want to have a better idea of 
who are those people? Are they honest? So you need to be on Google because, as an example, I got some other book offer uh, to write books because people were like uh, press people. They were looking on Google, finding some term, and they get on my blog, and they said that I wrote a couple of blog posts, and I did some presentation about, for example, responsive web design. And they told me, oh, Fred, you look like we heard of you, we find you, and I think you could uh, write that book. I think it makes sense because you have that expertise. And they didn't know me before, but it's because they found me on, on Google or put any search engine. Start a blog. Blogging, there's a lot of people that say that blog, blogs are dead, but I don't believe it, or podcasts are dead. I don't believe this. Uh, I still blog. I have a website. I honing my content. And what is great is that you can blog about everything. So I'm not doing a lot of technical blog posts. Even if I'm a technical guy, I like to blog about anything and everything. This is my personal space. This is where I'm sharing my own stuff, what I want to share with people. But I know a lot of people that have like really super technical blogs. And this is great because this is a great way to showcase your expertise. Maybe you want to talk about uh, a new JavaScript framework you use and you want to share your experience about it. Or maybe you fixed the bug at work, and this is something like a really, really silly bug in Ruby, and you want to share how you fixed that bug with other people. So your blog's gonna be a great platform. And there is a lot of blog platform out there. You can use WordPress if you want something a little more like uh, for developers. You can use platform like Jekyll because it's great. You can, or GitHub pages because you're going to use Markdown, you're going to use HTML, you're going to be able like, to, to pull requests on, on, on your site. Or, like, there is a lot of platform hard there that give you the opportunity to start a blog easily and without paying too much. Be on social media. I know a lot of people think that Facebook and Twitter is a big loss of time, and sometimes it is. Sometimes, it is. Uh, sometimes yes, I'm going to see uh, tweets about, hey, what my friends are eating for dinner. But sometimes I'm going to find an interesting article. Sometimes I'm going to meet an interesting person. And the connection you're making online are also important. So when I was a freelancer, I got a couple of contracts from Twitter, people that were looking for iPhone developers and Twitter contact that I didn't know in person that saw one of my posts about the fact that I was starting as a freelancer. I was offering iPhone development. and. People contacted me. They put me in contact because they saw me on Twitter. They didn't know me in person, but we had that like virtual relation. They didn't even know if I was a good developer, but they were giving me, they were putting me in contact with potential customers. So it's really important to be on social media to have that online visibility. Speak at conferences, and that could be something that you may be afraid of. It's kind of frightening to go in front of people when you go talk in front of like 10, 20, 30, 100 people, 200 people. But at the end of the day, it's an amazing experience. First, you're going to be able to share your passion with people, your expertise with people, but you're going to get a lot out of this from question from people, from connection you're going to make before and after the conference. And when you're on stage, you are the expert. So that's going to give you great visibility. And it's okay if you don't have experience, if you never spoke before, because you can go to your local user group, talk to the organizers, or there's a lot of conferences that give you the opportunity to start and to give your first talk. So you can go on lanyard.com, uh, and you can find many of uh, the conferences out there. You can see the call for speaker, and you can try. And maybe at the beginning, your talk is going to be refused. But you can also talk with experienced speaker, and most of them are, are really approachable, so you can talk to them. You can talk to me if you want some advice, if uh, you want people to review your slides, if you want people to review the story you're going to tell to people. So don't be afraid to ask for help. But you can also go on meetup.com and find some local meetup where you're going to assist, where you're going to talk to people, where you may be able to do a talk. Or maybe there is no user group where you live about a specific topic. So why not start in one? It's not that hard. You need to find a place, and you don't need to go crazy with drinks and food. And, and like, you make something free, you find a local. Most of the time, there's a lot of companies that have conference room big enough, like 20, 30, 40 people, and they're more than happy to see you there because that's going to be like free marketing for them. So there is a lot of interesting way. And by doing this, you're being seen 
as a doer. And if you're starting, uh, you start a user group about Swift language, programming language. Even if you're not a super expert about that language, because you start the user group, remember what I said, people will see you as the expert because you own that user group, because you organize that user group. So it's a good way to work on your brand and to get some visibility. Create something. It doesn't mean you need to create your company or create your startup. Just create a project. Create something open source, share it to the rest of the world. Uh, you have something you want to do during the weekend and the evening, do it. Create a software, uh, create a conference, create a user group, just create something. And it's not always about money. That can be just for the community. I'm running now two user groups. I don't make any money about it. it. It takes me time, but I like to do this because I'm giving back to the communities. And I know that those people that assist to the talk of my user groups, they know me now. And you never know how people is going to be able to help you in the future. But it's not just about helping people in case that it can help you in the future. But keep this in mind. By creating stuff, you're a doer. You're part of those bucket of people that are creating stuff. And you can help others. And there is different way. Uh, one of the most well-known forum out there for uh, technical developers, for technical people, is Stack Overflow. So you can go on Stack Overflow. Uh, I know some people don't like it. Some people liked it. Uh, you have your, your specific opinion about it, but you go on Stack Overflow, you help people, you answer some questions, and you can build a, a good profile because you're making points and you can see, uh, you can show this after to uh, an, a future employer. Look at me, I answered those questions, I have that expertise, so it's a way to showcase what you did and what you can do and showcase the fact that you're part of that community. You can also do other stuff. As an example, a great example, Maybe I say this because I was at Mozilla, but you can help to write some documentation. As an example, again, Mozilla, uh, they have the uh, Mozilla Developer Network, MDN. MDN, this is a really great documentation. It's an open wiki for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So why not help? Maybe you don't want to code all day long. Maybe you don't feel comfortable about participating in an, uh, an open source project. You can some, write some doc. You can report some bugs. And you're going to be part of that community. You can put this on your CV, on your resume. You can put this on your LinkedIn profile. And all those things are part of who you are and part of your brand. Maybe you have some design skills. I don't know for you. Mine are, are terrible. Like it, it was a running gag when I was uh, creating software as a full-time job. Like I was doing the code, but someone had to go after me to just like change the UI because it was so terrible. But if you're good, use Dribbble with the triple B. It's a really great place to showcase your work, showcase websites you created, showcase UI from application you created. So there is many ways for you to show your skills to the rest of the world. Use the tools that are out there. Some people like certification, some people don't like certification. There's some company that really strongly believe about certification and there is many certification depending on the type of technology, Java, Microsoft technology, uh, Oracle technology, they have a lot of certification out there. So maybe you don't like to go to school or go get a diploma, but certification is great because you can still show your expertise or at least you can show that you study a lot to pass the certification. But it's another great tool depending on how you feel about certification. You can also find industry recognition. Uh, another uh, great example is Microsoft. They have that uh, Microsoft MVP, the uh, most valuable professional. So they don't give that recognition to a lot of people. Yes, around the world, that means a lot of people. But as, as an example, I'm in Canada, and I don't know, maybe we're 50 people with different expertise around it. Uh, I'm thinking about Mozilla also because I know there's the uh, Mozilla, uh, what they call the Remo. So those people are the Mozilla representative, and they give that title to people that are really involved with specific technology, that are really doing great stuff in the community. And you can put this in your resume, and it's great to showcase that a company as big as Microsoft, or no matter the technology you use, if they have this in any other company, it's great to show that you are recognized as an expert, and it's not from your peer. It's really from a company that see a lot of those developers out there. So it's another way to get some visibility and show your expertise to people. 
And last but not least, network, network, and network. Uh, I know many developers are introvert. Uh, some developers are extrovert but are not too much about social stuff. You can start to network at a job, at, at your job, like just going out for lunch with coworker, just meeting people, because there is nothing more important than your network when it comes to your career path, when it comes to your personal brand. So go to user groups. Yes, maybe there's a presentation, but quite often they go to the local bar after to have a drink. Even if you don't drink alcohol, it's okay to go there, take a juice, take a bottle of water, and talk to people. Go to the networking part. It's super important. There's a lot of networking events for technical or non-technical people, and you can't, you don't have to restrict yourself to only technical networking event. You can go to any other event. Actually, everything is a networking event. When you go to conferences, talk to people at the break, go to the party and talk to people. You never know when the per person you're talking to will be your next boss or maybe a business partner of the future or customers at some point. So you never know who you're going to talk to. So talk to people, grow your network offline but also online. LinkedIn is a great example. Create connection, have people you worked with, have pos uh, potential customers or people you already worked with or you did contract for them. Those are connection. You're going to be able to help them in the future, but they may be able also to help you uh, in the future. So when should you start to think about personal branding? I would say yesterday. Now is too late. I told you, you already have a personal brand. You need to empower. You need to take the ownership of that brand. You need to control that brand to be sure that it's going to represent what you have in mind that's going to help you to reach your next goal. And you can start to do it right now. Some people tell me, oh, it's good, Fred. You can do this because part of your job is to go on Twitter and Facebook and part of your job is to do public speaking. It's annoying you're talking to me about those things because I cannot do this at work. Maybe you cannot do everything, but there are some things you can start outside of your work hours. But there are some things that you may be able to include at work. I had a friend who wanted to start to blog, but he really didn't want to blog on personal time because he has a family, three kids, and he don't want to take all this time to blog. So what he did, he started to he talk to his manager and say, hey, that could be great to showcase your expertise to the rest of the world. We are the best at doing these things. We should start a blog and start blogging. So at the beginning, it was like, okay, let's do one blog post, one blog post a month. It was not that much. But it was able to convince his boss. And now I think he's writing like two or three blog posts per week. And it's great because that brings business to the company. But because he's the author of most of the blog posts, it's great because he can, sh can showcase the blo those blog posts because they're external, because he is the author of those blog posts. So it's pretty good. There's a couple of things you can start. You can talk to your manager and say, hey, I would like to start to do public speaking. And when I go out, People see me as the person working at that company, so it's great publicity for you. And maybe you will have to take a day off on your personal uh, personal day off at the beginning. But it's a good way to start, and at some point you may be able to include more and more stuff in your day-to-day -day job. But it's a content it's a constant process. It's uh, you're gonna work always in your brand, and you are the expert. You are the expert of something. So I told you try to define your brand. Find, try to find that niche or trying to find that, that passion and that expertise you have that you want to build your brand around it. But don't be afraid if, you're, if you have an expertise about web standard. Yes, there's like those people like Ethan Marco and Jeffrey Zillman and those experts that have a lot of visibility. But it doesn't mean that you can do this. You just need to find that specific special sauce that you're going to put around it that is going to make you unique compared to the other people. But don't be afraid. You don't really need something super niche. You just need to find what makes sense for you. And try to leave a mark, your mark, on everything you do. Try to be there. Try to do some quality work. Try to make it hard. So it's only the beginning. We scratched the surface really quickly. I may have talked for too long as usual, but I want to take the rest of the time to take some questions about personal branding, uh, any question you have about how you can apply this to your job, 
Uh, does it really make sense or not? If you think that I said some stuff that are totally stupid, let me know. I'm there to discuss about you with, uh, about personal branding and answer any question. Feel free if you don't have time to uh, answer a question or, or if you're not happy with my answers or whatever, feel free to send me an email, hefarber at oocz.net or ping me on Twitter and LinkedIn or everywhere else. Uh, you can uh, see some of, my, some of my blog posts on outofcomfortzone.net. I'm not there to make some promotion about my book, even if I'm talking about personal branding, but if you want to know more, uh, you can uh, search for the personal branding book. Uh, the title is super long. It's Success and Programming, blah, 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 blah. But you can find it on Amazon on different website. It's published at APRES. Awesome. Thanks, Fred. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump into some Q&A. We've been getting some via chat and I got some via email. Um, so to start off, there, there's a couple pretty specific ones and then some broader ones. So um, a couple people I think are really interested in getting more into blogging. And uh, one question was, you know, I know you mentioned how you blog. Some people are wondering if they're developers and they're blogging, should they bias their blog towards being about programming? I know you mentioned you try to get have some some personal stuff in there too. If you know, how do you sort of figure out that balance there? It, that's going to be really a personal uh, decision. I see that I see that a lot of like social media experts will tell you choose one topic, stick to it, and, and be always consistent and try to blog regularly, like if you decide three times a week, do it three times a week. I have the approach that this is my home. I'm going to blog about anything I want. So I can do a technical blog post on the Monday, but on the Tuesday I want to talk about a really bad experience I have at that conference or just something that happened to me because I'm trying to go to the gym more often. So this is my approach. And that was good for me because people, when people define me, they say, oh, Fred, Yes, he's a technical guy, but he's human. We see the good side of Fred, we see the bad side of Fred, and I'm really, really transparent. So I would say find a topic that you would like to talk about and try to stick to it most of, uh, most of the time because that's going to be easier to build an audience. And at the beginning, you won't have a lot of people, a lot of readers, but it's okay. Continue because first you do this for yourself, and after this, you're going to build that audience. Mm. Awesome. Can you talk a little bit about sort of when you crossed the chasm of of creating work that was only seen by you know, maybe your business associates or yourself to when you started working on open source stuff or things that were very public? Because a few people also wrote in about just, you know, the inferiority complex of suddenly writing for everybody, whether that's blogging or contributing to open source. You know, what was that experience like for you? Do you have any suggestions for people um, trying to get started there? Yeah, first it's not easy. I remember my first job. Uh, everything we were doing was for customer. It was super private. So even when I tried to get a new job, it was super hard for me because I had nothing to show. I had to sign up some like uh, privacy paper thing, and I was like, okay, I worked for five years, but I can just show you one screenshot that is on the website. So it was kind of hard for me to sell my expertise and my experience. So it's it's at that point that I started to try to do a little more things public and open source. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is that when you do this, you're doing a lot more than any other people that are not doing it. So your code may not be perfect. You may have some bugs, but it's okay. You're doing your stuff, you're putting this online, and this is the beauty of open source. You're going to have people that will say, hey, did you think about that? Or, oh, maybe you can change that chunk of code because that's not working well. And you need to be more open mind, I would say, and uh, think about it. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the tips. You're going to change your code, and you're going to learn about it. So you don't need to be, like, obfuscated about those people giving you some advice. And, of course, you're going to have some those trolls, those people that would say, hey, your code sucks. Like, why are you being a developer? You need to, to do something else. And the thing is that it's, it's the web, it's internet, you're behind a screen, it's easier for people to do this. So I would say just try to deal with those people, or maybe in your dam, if it doesn't make sense for you, you will always have those people, and at the end of the day, you cannot please everyone. So keep in mind that because you did it, maybe those people don't do it. So you, you are one step further than the people that are complaining. Awesome. Um, 
what are the most typical errors that you're seeing programmers make when they start to try to brand themselves? Oh, this is a good question. Uh, that that will sound kind of weird, but trying too hard, like trying to push yourself everywhere, trying to do everything. Like I just gave some specific example before, but not too much. Like I talk about Stack Overflow, blogging, and social media, and Dribble, and all those places. Like after that mentor, uh, that that co-mentor hour. Don't go open an account everywhere and trying to do everything. You won't have enough time. I have the opportunity to be able to do this because it's part of my work. So I'm being paid to do those kind of things right now. So it's easier for me to do everything. But you need to focus on what makes a lot more sense for you, what's going to have more impact, and what you're going to have the time to do. So it may mean just starting a blog and forget everything else. And it's okay. You start with this, and maybe you're not going to have to do other stuff. And you don't need to do something if it doesn't make sense for you, if you don't like it. Uh, as an example, I have a Google Plus account, but I'm not a big fan of Google Plus for a different reason. I already have like LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. So I go there once in a while, but I don't take too much time. So I may even shut down Google Plus at some point because I don't want to have like that empty space that I don't like use that much. Gotcha. On that on that note, how do you what what's sort of your workflow of combing the web to make sure you're represented everywhere the way you want? Um, do you use Google Alerts or you know how do you keep track of your brand? It's uh, it's a work in itself to keep track of your brand. So there's different tools. Uh, you mentioned Google Alert, uh, Talkwalker. There's a lot of those tools that you can search specific term, and that may sound pretentious, but I have an alert on Frederick Harper on my name. I have an alert on some of my project. I have an alert on the title of my book because I want to know when people are talking about me. I want to know when people are talking about something. Sometimes that would, that may be good. That would be like, okay, I made it. Like people are talking about me, it's great. But maybe sometimes people are complaining about something. They may be right or they may not understand something. So I have those tools. Uh, on Twitter, I have some search. I'm using TweetDeck, and I have a column with a search on those exact same term, so I know when people are talking about me. If they don't use my Twitter handle, I know it. So I have those kind of tools that are tracking, uh, that are tracking search engine, that are tracking Twitter, and I have my notification on like Facebook and LinkedIn and Google Plus, so I know that most of the time I don't. I try not to go crazy with notification because there's too often, too much notification. But still, I want to be sure that I'm going to be able to reply to people, answer questions to people, and be there for people. Gotcha. So you talked about how having you know a wide net of branding is obviously really helpful for if you're being kind of vetted for a new position. If someone's searching for a great new Java developer, they see all these blogs you've written. What about if it's more outgoing? So if 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 we have some developers here who are looking to apply to new jobs, you know, can is it appropriate to utilize some of these branding things in cases like that to send them links to open source things they've done, um, you know, in addition to the traditional job application? Yeah, I, I would say uh, don't be afraid to do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, I often like when I did previously some interviews. Uh, one of the links that I was sending was my blog. Because I'm so transparent and honest in my blog post that you can have a really good idea about my passion, my expertise, but also about who I am because we're going to work together. So you want to know me a little bit. It's not just about my technical skills. It's about my personal skills. So send your GitHub profile, send your blog, send your Twitter account, send everything that could make sense for the job. And don't be afraid. Sometimes you're going to have like picture of you partying. Sometimes you're going to have like part of your code that you're not going to be proud of on GitHub. It's okay. It's okay. If an employer is looking for the perfect employee that's going to be like perfect all the time, you may not want to work for that company. So it's mm -hmm. okay. Or you'll see a, a, a video online of someone's cat jumping behind them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's great. A um, uh, couple other people wrote this question, which I thought was interesting. So if, you, if you're coming from the place where you're a pretty experienced developer, but you're brand new on, on really getting your branding chops together, how do you think about, and this is sort of a broad generalization, but how do you think about balancing the focus on 
your technical skills and the branding work. So obviously you got to you still have to keep up your your knowledge and code every day, but you're if you're just starting all the groundwork to brand, you know, how do you recommend people kind of think about that split? Uh, actually, you should think about personal branding or working on your brand being part of what you do every day. And I still have a cat in the background. It's part of every conference I do online. I have cats. <laughs> I always want to join in. So cats are part of my brand. But uh, I would uh, I would think about personal branding to be more included in everything you do. So don't taking don't take this about something separate. But what you can do is trying to optimize what you're already doing. So you have an expertise with a specific language, and you have a lot of cool projects that you worked on. Why not put them available somewhere? Somewhere, GitHub, Bitbucket, name it. There's a lot of places. So you will still continue to do what you love and continue to work on your technical skills. But you're going to be able to have some projects online that people will be able to see or participate in. Or maybe you're trying to learn a new programming language or learn something new in, in the programming language language that you already knew. But why not take one hour or two to write a blog post about how you learned that language, what are the uh, fault, uh, the problem that you can have when you use that language. Gotcha. Um, yeah, please uh, feel free to chime in if anyone else has any other questions. I have I really only have about one more on my end. Um, uh, you know, what other resources do you recommend on, on this topic for people to keep learning? You know, who who are you following that inspires you to up your branding game? Actually, uh, funny enough, I'm not following anyone that are telling people that they know personal branding. I'm following people that are related to the brand I want. Mm. So, as an example, when I wanted to be a technical evangelist. I started to follow up the people that I didn't follow before, people that have a strong brand in the web like Jeffrey Zellman, or I was following a Christian Elman who was an evangelist, or Ray Bengo, or uh, Paul Irish from Google. So I said, okay, let's find the people that are successful that already attend, uh, that already reached the goal that I want to reach. And I was following those people, and I steal some tricks. Uh, as an example, I'm always recording my talks right now because I'm doing a talk in person. But after this, I can write a blog post, sharing my slide, having a video of my talks for people that were not there. So I steal that idea from Christian Lillman, who uh, was at Mozilla now at Microsoft. So I steal that idea because it was doing great, and it's okay. Great artists steal. So it was a great idea. So. You can pick and choose what makes sense for you, and I thought that it would make totally sense for me. So choose the people that are related to the brand you want to build. Awesome. Um, well, if no one else has any other questions, I think we can we can wrap stuff up. This was an amazing sort of introduction for a lot of people um, into to getting more involved in controlling their brand. So thank you so much, Frederick. And um, for everyone watching, uh, this is being recorded and will be on the Code Mentor YouTube channel um, as soon as we wrap up here. So you can always come back and reference it. Um, we definitely recommend uh, checking out uh, Fred's book, um, which you can you can find on his website. And um, also, if if you ever have any technical or branding questions, definitely use Code Mentor. There actually are a number of experts that have some branding experience, so definitely check that out. And uh, if there's nothing else, I'll uh, I'll say good afternoon, morning, or evening, wherever everyone else is in the world. And thanks so much. Thanks. All right. Take care.